Hey, I'm Weekend Gabe, and you're checking out Weekend at Gabe's, and thanks for checking out this latest episode. While you're here, also follow us on these social medias at Weekend Gabe, at Weekend at Gabe's, and also at The Real Sam Crane. Thanks for checking us out. Uh, yeah, man, it's been a long time since we last saw each other uh, when I was over at Loyola doing work, and you would always come up there and be super supportive with your talents and bringing other new talent up to the show. So uh, I wanted to catch up with you because I saw that you have the new record out, which your ever evolved team, elite champions. It just dropped. Uh, congratulations. It's, it's heavy as hell because there's a lot to get through. Uh, but I yeah, wanted yeah. to just, <laughs> it, it is not for the week. Let's just say that. Um, but uh, congratulations on the new release. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, making this album. What was the the mission? I know you have a lot of talent that you work with as part as part of your full service uh, that you offer as far as mixing, engineering, helping young artists really get their feet grounded and to get their product and their music out there. So, how did you decide like which artists you really wanted to put into this mix of League Champions? Yeah, so League Champs, uh, I thought of the idea. Uh, watching, I forgot I was watching, I was watching like Narcos Mexico. He had like taken all the crazy people, crazy dudes in Mexico and formed them all together under a union. And I think about the Chicago scene, how like diverse it is, but how like segregated we are. And it's the same thing like, as a city. Cause I know metal heads that like hip hop. I know hip hop heads that like house music. Mm. So I just wanted to keep it within like the circle of Ever Evolved, but also like within whoever with, is within arm's reach of Ever Evolved. But like, you see like associates on there, like Orlando Coolridge, Cam By Deem, uh, like I got some new members ever of all, like Ben Rose. He's like a heavy metal guy. So that's where a lot of like the metal comes in. Uh, we did some house. My homie King singing's on there. He's a you know phenomenal singer. So it was just about bringing these different genres together. Because usually when you say the word like compilation, you think like one, you know, one thing. So it, this one, I was like, why don't we just bring everything together under one roof and just see what happens? Because I want to throw the show where, you know, I see metal heads hanging out with hip hop heads, hanging out with break dancers and all that. So, yeah. So, I mean, I wanted to get to you uh, about that because there's such a diverse sound of rock. Uh, there's some a little bit of Spanish in there. There's obviously hip hop. There's a a large range of different sounds. So when you were constructing this, I imagine that you were also thinking like, "Well, let's let's showcase not just hip hop, but what everyone's doing." Yeah, because like I said, in Chicago, there's like a hundred different events a night, and they could range and go in any type of direction, and. It's just like, you know, I want to show the unity in Chicago as far as music. We got, we're working on volume two right now. And then we got a deluxe version coming out, which is going to be, you know, just as diverse. And we're going to have even more people on it from uh, out of state, in state, uh, some more different bands of that such. But yeah, man, it was, it was just my goal to, I never really heard like a, a project that was put together like that by a collective or a label. Like I said, it's usually just like one sound. And I even goes back, if you ever seen uh, the Defiant Ones documentary with Jimmy Iovine and uh, Dr. Dre, well, when Jimmy yeah. Iovine first started his label, he was signing rappers, he had metal bands, he had this over here, he had Eminem hanging out with Marilyn Manson. So I feel like that's that's the, an avenue that Chicago needed, and I felt that I could fill that gap for it. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Talk about, talk about from, because you, you cast a pretty wide net. I read an article that described you as a magnet for talent. Um, <laughs> Hendrick 3000 comes off all the way from Germany. Am I, am I right in saying that? Yeah, Heinrich 3000. Uh, Heinrich, I, linked, yeah. I linked with him like, I mean, I never met him, but I met him through SoundCloud probably like five years ago. I was just surfing through SoundCloud. I'm like, man, I got I to gotta find a dope producer. And I came across his music. I hit him up. And then we've been working ever since then. Uh, prior to the League Champs, I did this thing called the Foreign Connection Series where almost like every week and a half, two weeks, I dropped a new song. <laughs> That he produced and he did the artwork for. We did about like nine tracks, so that was dope. Nice. Uh, you can see him in like uh, he's wearing like a hat in the cover of the League Champs thing. He's like way somewhere in the left side or right side, I forget. But he did the like the house booty call when I got booty call. He produced layup, uh, and then I think it was like another one. And then we got a bunch of other songs of his on volume two as well. So he's he's definitely digging it. Like he's never been to America, but I'm like, man, you're on the billboard in America. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, I pressed uh, triple five, triple five, quadruple five, and I don't know if I'm ever going to receive a, um, a gift, but just letting you know that, Rhymster, uh, that I'm waiting. The line's always busy, so, you know, it's hard to get to. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I, we, uh, Sam and I were talking about some of our favorite records on there, uh, and uh, I Don't Give a Duck is like one of those records that I just have. I, I think it's just like really fun and just kind of like feels like a Bismarcky kind of record. And then like this, my song also has a great uh, soulful hip hop vibe to it as well. So there's like these these great these great records that are uh, you know mixed into this otherwise fun. A uh, montage of different sounds that Chicago's creating right now, and uh, what what do you think that like you know putting this record together? Uh, what what was the outcome that you were hoping for? Uh, well, for one, just uh, showing that like artists in Chicago could put their egos aside and uh, work together. That uh, it's okay to you know take input from somebody who's not necessarily in your genre. Uh, a lot of these records, you know, I was necessarily i'm the one i was the one engineering them i produced a good amount of uh league champs uh you know so i was very hands-on with everything and i like i really it almost felt like quincy jonas you know because he like he's always he was always in a room with artists songwriters and you help him put you know you help him put the body of work together and i just wanted like i, said, I wanted to show chicago like with the billboard and stuff like we're a bunch of ugly looking cartoon heads so you know it obviously catches attention <laughs> so just like marketing things of like that uh lee champ shout out to my guy uh, hayward we, uh, we were just brainstorming the idea when they were like man you know what can we like call this and you know we thought of league he thought of league champs and we just you know ran with it and uh, if you've been seeing my instagram we've been doing like funny promos as far as like sports uh we've been shooting uh like <laughs> documentary that we're gonna like kind of have like we're probably gonna shoot a documentary like the whole, the whole rest of the year probably drop it sometime early next year that shows yeah. like how everybody a part of this project got involved with Ever Evolve and, you know, what songs they're on, how it came to be. And a lot of times, like, more than half these songs happen by accident because somebody, you know, murmured or we freestyled or I hit a key by accident and then, you know, it turned into this. So it was always, like, it was it was very organic. It was, nothing was, like, really forced at all. And there were some, like, some songs that we that we had kind of, like, lingering around that we were like, okay, you know what? We should throw it on here because it'll fit. Like, this is my song. For example, uh, shout out my homie Ivan L from Florida, Broward County. Uh, he was, uh, me and him had that song for a minute. And then me and Keem uh, had the Entourage song. We're going to drop the video tomorrow. So we had that for a minute. So <laughs> we still got, we still got some other ones in the, in the pot. So we had just, like I said, like I said, Unity. Uh, we're te- definitely taking lead champs on the road. I just got these bad boys. If y'all can see them. Let's see. Yeah. So right here, uh, camera. is that. Yeah, and then in the, right. the, the back, we got the QR code. So that leads to like a, a flow code page that, you know, breaks down everything. We're about to have like a lead chance festival uh like a couple weeks and like yeah it's just like the whole rest of the year that's just my goal to just to dive into each community and invite them in because as soon as we invite them in you know that gets them into our studio i just expanded studios i got a live a live sound a live recording studio now so we can bring in drummers bands of that nature so it's all about like expansion so this project is really showing like not just our creativity but like how well our skill is as far as putting music together songwriting marketing uh engineering mastering I, I uh, you mentioned it uh, back there, uh, my entourage, which was one of my favorite songs on the record. Uh, I wanted to know if you had five slots, what would be your dream entourage? My dream entourage. That's a good yeah. one. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'll say the Rock for sure. Uh, mm-hmm. You gotta have one. muscle. You gotta yeah, have muscle. You gotta have muscle. Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. Let's see. Um, <laughs> See, uh, I put Jay Z in my entourage. You know, even yeah. though he, even though he got his own little entourage. Uh, let's see who else. Uh, damn, it's a good one. Probably like a, probably like a two chains. You know, I need him to bring the weed, bring the weed yep. and stuff. Uh, who's another good one? Uh, damn, I'm trying to think. Uh, Gotta bring Snoop. You gotta put Snoop in there. I'll, bring, I'll put Snoop in there. I'll put Snoop in there. I'll put him in there. <laughs> Him and two he's, just, he's just good energy and he's going to smoke. Oh, yeah, he's, he's always just happy and stuff. And then, uh, <laughs> man, I'm trying to think. I would probably put a – um, let me get like a Zach Levine. Let me get a Bulls player in there, you know. For my- <laughs> <laughs> fire. Fire. Got to represent. That's fine. And you talked a little bit about the artwork, but uh, maybe dive in a little deeper about how that came together because it's definitely a so interesting I, uh, part to me. Yeah, so uh, I was rocking. Um, like, remember back in the day, the, the when the Bulls won, like they used to, they used to all be cartoon heads, and right. they were like, selling, like vintage C. So uh, I had got that as a gift uh, from my from my wife, and uh, I was wearing it one day, and I'm like, and I was like, man, it would be so dope because we had already come up with lead champs. So then we tried to think of like ideas for the cover. I was like, yo, we should all be like cartoon heads in our own sense, 
and like be on that. And then that's when I thought about like the billboard. I'm like, imagine people see, you know, these cartoons and that. So uh, shout out to Amanda. She basically just, we took a picture. We all took different pictures. She took a picture of us and then she went and did her thing, made my head like this damn big. My other <laughs> so, but it bring, it, I love it because it brings everybody to life. And then, you know, so what we're going to do is everybody's going to, everybody has their own individual like characters. So they're going to have like their own stickers. Uh, one idea, have you ever seen like a fat head? So one idea is like we're gonna we're gonna print those out as fat heads and we're gonna put them all around the city and people can take pictures with them, stuff like that. Hell yeah, that's a good idea. I like the fat um, head idea. I would cop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, no, but yeah. So it, your, that was the idea for sure. You're featured. I I don't know what the number is, but at least like six or seven songs. Like where where do you as as uh, sort of a sports analogy? Like giving the assists, like what kind of like role do you think you played in this as like, you know, jumping in? I know you were doing a lot of like uh, production work, work and being behind the scenes and helping the song uh, process, but like you're also leaping in and carrying the songs as well. So what where were you? Where yeah. were kind of like play, you just would you describe yeah. with all the work you're doing? Like a, a, a you know a, a Damian Lillard, LeBron. Like, uh, I'm from Chicago, man. I gotta go. I gotta go with the MJ role, you know. But what I will say is, like everybody had, <laughs> everybody had their uh, their MJ moments as far as like on this project. And from a music standpoint, I would say like you know like an executive producer, I guess, like an overseer of the project. But also like you know coach this and that. And I always like to encourage my team. I'm like, yo, we all have the capability to be like leaders in our own way. And we all have uh, different hats that we can wear. So a lot of times it wasn't just you know me. Uh, me just pointing in one direction. I would I would lead it, like pass the ball, and then somebody else would do it. You know, it's like it's all about good ball movement. So that's what I felt this project really had is good ball movement. Whether I was on it or I wasn't on it, but I was involved one way or another, and everybody was involved on it because I would send it to them and be like, "Yo, what you guys think it is? Does it need this? Does it need that?" Versus just putting it out there. And then when we put the track list together, we all like you know had a chat and we we're like, "Okay, we should put this one before that one." Okay, we should have Will do this. So it was like a, it was really a team effort. You know, like. This ain't the Brooklyn Nets, man. They be they're all about. I ain't all about that showboat. It's all about winning. At the end of the day, that's why it's lead champs. Mm. <laughs> I love it. No, straight up, and and one of the key members of the team, he, he's on a lot of the records. Uh, is Camp by Dean. Talk about your relationship with him and and how you got started with him because his output this year in particular has been flooding the streets. I can't I can't go on the internet without seeing Camp by Dean content. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I met I met Camp by Dean years ago. Uh, to a gentleman by the name of Mark Naren, who's a painter, and I just I just saw like the same hustle in him that I had, you know. And he's always he's always on me like, man, you ain't never take no days off. I'm like, no, you never take no days off. So <laughs> we're always on one another, uh, challenging one another. And like, uh, I, I would think like within the past year, like me and him have really like grown a bigger, solid, more solid relationship together. Uh, and then you know we always push him like he's got his own you know can't buy Dean brand and all that. So we're always supporting him and pushing him. And I like him spread out all over the rec all over the records you hear him like in a little bit in the beginning, the middle, near the end. Uh, he just bring he just brings that energy, and I just I just feel like he's one of like Chicago's dopest MCs, and I'm I'm just dope. I'm just glad to have him as a friend and just you know as somebody that believes in us and believes in our journey as well. Right, absolutely. So I mean, Volume Two is like heavy with you know 27 tracks or. Uh, yeah, 27 records. What well, volume two? I can imagine. Are you guys gonna double back and like give us another 27 records, or how, how, what, how is it shaping up? Yeah, so it's looking like man, because my studio, my studio is 24 seven, and I've got two rooms, so it's like you can imagine the amount of things that we create like in just a day <laughs> or just a week. So I'm already looking at like over 40 songs right now. So uh, what I like to do is maybe keep it around the same thing. Because I'm like, look. Amigos could drop a damn 30 song project with all the same songs. I could drop a 30 song project with very different songs that'll always keep you entertained. And one thing that I did on the project that I'd never seen done before is at the very end, I have a, a, a mix by DJ Hunt. Like I had a mix of the actual project that you just heard. Yeah, I noticed that as well, yeah. So on volume two, I'm gonna have one by DJ Kerhenny. And then on the Deluxe, I'll probably have one, but yeah, it'll probably be around the same. Uh, we're gonna switch up the skits a little bit just to you know keep it going, but we're definitely gonna keep the whole League Champs you know, idea, ideology as far as sports and all that, but it's gonna be fun, man. I, I'm already saying, I'm already saying that Volume Two has got already got more fire than Volume One. So, can we expect some more metal songs? Because I really enjoyed those. Oh yeah, oh man, dude. Uh, shout, shout out to my homie Ben. He's he already gave me about five to eight of them already, and they're about to go work on like they're about to go work on some Spanish metal. It's about to go crazy. Like we're going insane. 
Yo, that's crazy. <laughs> Spanish metal. Man, yeah, um, so I'm, I'm well, when when you think about your your journey, uh, Rhymster, because you know when I when I first ran into you, like you were really just starting to get ever evolved off the ground, and you guys, it was like you and a few other people, and you guys were really working independently and had like a small group of people, and to see the expansion, like the the the, the list of artists that you have on this uh, alone. And see how far you've grown, and like you said, you're already talking about expanding your studio and doing bigger things and getting more con like getting more records uh, produced and mixed. Like, you know, is this where you thought that Ever Evolve would be at at this point, or is are you have exceeded expectations? Uh, I mean, I've reached goals. I would say, uh, like with every great like you know team dynasty, it takes you know you got to trim some fat, you got to go through the ups, you got to go through the downs. But as far as like my vision for, not even just my vision, my vision, uh, Will Bolano is the founder, I'm the co-founder. Our vision was always just to bring a collective that's gonna make an impact as big as, you know, Bad Boy or TDD, TDE did in New York or what Dr. Dre did or what that's because that's my goal. So I'm more of the hip hop, he's more of the house. And now I have Ben, and now I have my homie Ben in the middle with like metal music. So now I have three, and I have my homie Keem who's, you know, R&B soul singer. So now I have four different genres that we really just attacking and, I'm not everybody thinks we're a label, but I'm like, no, we're not a label, we're more of a collective, we're more of like an academy. Because you come hang out at Ever of All for like two, three days, like you're gonna leave with a bunch of knowledge, whether it be from just the conversations we have to the production that we do, any of that, like any of any of those things. So my goal is to make make this just one of the biggest collectives in Chicago. And not even just to put ourselves on, put others on, put other artists on. Like I'm as you can see, I'm an event curator. We put tons of shows on, we throw competitive over mic. So it's not even about just me, it's about showing love and so. stuff. Absolutely. Can we can we expect a return to to some live shows soon? Are we are we back at it soon? Can we see the? Oh metal yeah, yeah. My, uh, matter of fact, this Thursday I got a art exhibit at Empirical Brewery from my homie. Uh, I am Art God. He's actually on a project. He goes by Cocky Kid. Uh, he um. So we're doing that. We're doing a video shoot there. It's gonna be live performances. DJ. 24th. 24th, We got ODA. So we got an ODA with comics and um. Comics, singers, and rappers. Then July 22nd, I got a competitive open mic where artists are going to do a song apiece, and then the, the crowd's going to decide who moves on. Uh, July 29th, I got a, a crew show where I got four crews coming out. With some, uh, and then so it's like one from Florida. I got Slum Gang, uh, Ever Evolved, and I got Goodfellas. Uh, my birthday's the 30th, so I'm going to throw like a little private celebration there. Uh, 31st, we're doing Lee Champs Festival. That's in the suburbs. And then August 1st, we're having like a barbecue. So I'll send, I'll send Gabe all the, all the flyers. He, I was telling Where? We would definitely come out for the barbecue. Just letting you know. <laughs> Gabe wants to come to the barbecue. Gabe wants to come to the barbecue for sure. That's, all, give you all, that's all, all the food. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> I, I, I'll take it. Uh, Rob, sir, thank you so much for joining us here. Looking at Gabe's League Champs Volume One is out now on all digital streaming platforms. We appreciate you during Weekend at Gabe's. Oh man, much love. Appreciate y'all, man. I always support, man. I hope to see you at the barbecue. <laughs> hey, you don't want to see him at the barbecue. I'm knocking down. Formidable opponent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, y'all. Y'all have a good night. Appreciate it. <laughs> Peace. No, no, I think. Uh, uh, hey, those days are behind me, man. I don't. I don't. Do <laughs> oh man! Oh great! Yeah, no, great I don't do album. The eating. <laughs> yeah, man! Great, great album! Great energy! Uh, shout out to him! Shout out to Ever Evolved! Uh, League Champs Volume One out now. The Billboard is somewhere in Chicago. We never got where the Billboard was. We needed to figure that out. We'll we'll get that information at some point. Maybe that's uh, uh, well. When you see it, you know it. You know. But that's uh but hopefully yeah we keep an eye out for that hey i'm weekend gabe thanks for checking out this latest episode of weekend at gabe's click on any of the links swirling around my head and also hit the subscribe button while you're here thanks for checking out us here on youtube